In part two of Miami Virtue, Greg Ulmer describes the methodology that was used to conduct the project that was featured in this book. Key features in this section include a detailed analysis of the popsicle and a kind of journal that the consultant from the FRE kept for the Miami Virtue Project. To have experienced trauma is to have experienced a deeply distressing event, and this is something that will happen to everyone, whether we like it or not. What does it mean to be traumatized? What kind of response will someone have to trauma? Who can say? That which is disturbing to you does not need to be distressing to me. We all react to things differently. This is valuable. In viewing photographs and responding to a scene, different things will appeal to different viewers. I seek, with Greg Ulmer, to add validity to this idea. One of the most striking ideas that I gleaned from this methodology is the idea that a researcher's personal experiences validate and otherwise impact the research project. This axiologically value-laden research style is common in ethnography and in cultural studies. Previously, we have discussed punctums, the kind of obtuse third meaning that allows an image or other stimulus to strike a person in a very personal and particular kind of way. I view this kind of punctum as a sort of trauma, but with this trauma also comes the potential for an epiphany. Homer argues that a My Story writes an epiphany, which he explains as being the poetic means for expressing an uncanny encounter with some thing. So the purpose of the My Story is not merely to isolate a problem or to do something that is good. It is also has the potential to be an individually cathartic experience. As we see from the journal-style writing of the consultant during the consultancy, the researcher was facing tough questions about his or her own personal life relationships in addition to her completing the research. Homer cites Jameson saying, We can say that if an individual experience is authentic, then it cannot be true, and that if a scientific or cognitive model of the same content is true, then it escapes individual experience. Ultimately, maestri values individual experience. Homer argues that making a my story is like making a map that traverses all through the different discourses of our lives, such as family, entertainment, school, and career specialization. Homer creates a frame of understanding the narratives through these different aspects that he calls the pop cycle. The first discourse considered in the pop cycle is family. Things to consider for this, Homer explains, are the kinds of discourse that operate within the family system, jokes, anecdotes, and legends. Through this lens, we can gain some insight into how the formation of the individual takes place. The discourse on entertainment is important, as through entertainment, and because of entertainment, a person begins to internalize certain values and ways of being that are not native to that individual. This category is perhaps closest to the idiom, you are what you eat. The discourse on school allows us to examine the way that people are trained. In a Foucauldian sense, examining the way people are trained helps us to understand which things are canonized and which things are thrown out with the trash. This reveals a great deal about our culture. The discourse on career, like that of school, helps us to understand the way one acts, the way that one thinks subjectively and critically about things. It can also reveal certain trained incapacities and ways of considering the way that we think and act that we might have not otherwise considered. Homer argues that the best and brightest thinkers have always been those who automatically consider things through the entire pop cycle. As I consider this, I'm reminded of the notion of synthesizing information within the realm of interdisciplinary research. Homer argues that the maestri functions as a cog congenitive map which locates the maker's position in each of the pop cycle institutions. He cites Nietzsche to explain that the purpose of the maestri is to be searching for the secret point at which the aphorism of thought intersects with the anecdote of life. 
Beyond the pipe pop cycle, coming to understand our experience of a thing or phenomenon is tremendously complicated. In the case of this consultant, in addition to the difficulty of doing the research, she was also called di caused difficulty with her boyfriend because of the research. So, not only are we caught up in trying to understand the way that different institutions speak into our lives, we are trying to understand the way that our environmental factors are affecting the way that we conduct research, and somehow, we have to make sense of all of that. Throughout much of Ulmer's recent work, he has sought to invent and invite and invited others to invent the concept of electricity. Electricity is to the digital apparatus as writing is to the literate apparatus. With that understood, this historical project is more than an interpretation. It's also an invention. By considering the different historical practices of the pop cycle, a testimonial is produced. In this case, a photographic testimonial which captures the kind of obtuse third meaning which is present in the photo crossroads. By recognizing this, meaning is created, but it can also be used as testimony. So far, we have covered the theoretical grounding for electricity and the pop cycle. Stay tuned until next week for the third and final section of Greg Ulmer's Miami Virtue. At this time, we'll delve more into the considerations of mood of different areas and its implications on doing my historical research.